All right, good afternoon and getting Erev Shabbos. Good Erev Shabbos, everybody. So it's Erev Shabbos, that means we learn. It's been for a few weeks now, and I, I, I like doing it. It's, it's become a habit. I read somewhere that um, Reb Chaim, the Chusy Galenu, now they're already, uh, I guess, uh, Shiva, I guess, is done. I don't know if, uh, or if they're going by the Gvura, then it'll be I mean, really Shabbos, or just maybe a few minutes Sunday, I don't, I'm not sure, but, well, actually, no, Shabbos would be the end of the Shiva anyway. So, um, even, even, even with, uh, so it's basically, Shiva's already over for Abchaim, but, uh, there was the Torah Anytime, which is a nice website. They, I think it was Torah Anytime or Meaningful Minute, I think they might have been. They had uh, a little book of eight life lessons that we learned from Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim Kanievsky, and One of them is that learning Torah should be a habit. Shouldn't just be a uh, you know an intellectual pursuit, right? We, I saw that also from uh, someone's brought from Tolna Rebbe, so it's on side, and that uh, when it says it shouldn't only be a Intellectual pursuit, meaning that it shouldn't be a salmali svarim or a chamor nice svarim. It's not just an intellectual pursuit; it has to transfigurate us. But the, I think the way that this transfiguration happens is through the habit of Torah study, and by developing a habitual Torah study, it transfigurates us because Torah study is different than prayer in that matter. Because prayer is not supposed to be habitual; it's supposed to be inspired. But because Torah study, because prayer is what we're giving, so to speak, back to God, even though we're not really giving anything to God, but it's the way we develop our relationship with God. But Torah study is God is speaking to us, right, so to speak, more than so to speak, and so therefore we've got this. Um, this very special way of, of learning Torah that it's it becomes automatic. I, I saw something from Rabbi Victor Miller. I love Rabbi Victor Miller. I know some people have different opinions about him, but I, I really have tremendous, tremendous respect for, for Rabbi Miller. And I, I have Zoycha to be there by him a few times, two or three times. And just an incredible person. And I, I, I get these emails from, from, from uh, I think it's Simcha Daily, something like that, uh, from Rabbi Victor Miller. And he said that, you know, when you bow down in prayer, it shouldn't just be a habit, it should just be automatic. Uh, you, you know, you should think I'm bowing down to thank God, even just to thank God for the, for for my lips and tongues that I'm able to express myself in prayer. He said, if you if if you do that once in your lifetime, that's already an incredible accomplishment. And it's really true because we think of those of us who have developed, thank God, a prayer life, a prayer lifestyle, a liturgical lifestyle. We tend to get lost in the liturgy. It tends to be automatic. And while we fulfill our obligation in doing that, and we have to do that nonetheless, uh, whether or not we are really inspired, we have to at least do that. That's the least we have to do. But there's so much more we can do can really attain tremendous greatness 
through liturgical prayer. Devotional Torah study goes in the opposite direction. You know, it's the Archeuser. So therefore, when we learn Torah, there, it should be habitual. According, at least according to Reb Chaim. And I think there is something to say about that, about developing a habitual devotion to limit the Torah because it, it, it transfigurates us truly. It become, it, I mean, we, we develop good habits. We ask God to give us the habits within thy Torah. That's, that's one of the things we pray for every day. So to develop a habit of learning Torah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the opposite. That's what we should do. And don't be discouraged by people who try to discourage you from learning. You know, this is what Reb Chaim did, to learn all of that Torah every day. That is something we could all do. We should all strive to get to that point. We shouldn't imagine that that's only for the Gedolim and that's not for us and we're, we're not shy to that. No, it's for every Jew. We can all be devoted into Torah to the point where we should have a goal of getting to that point. And of, you know, uh, that, and it becomes a habit. And it's a very humbling experience. It's not something that makes you arrogant. Look, look at me. Look at what I accomplished. No. You could be proud of it and excited about it, but not in an arrogant way that you're overbearing on other people. But in my experience, although I'm not learning as much as Reb Chaim did, but my experience of developing a, a habit of Torah study and then engaging in it and living up to it even if it's not the best, even if it's not the most intellectual pursuit, but it's a spiritual pursuit, it's a devotional pursuit. I'm, you know, I'm not doing this necessarily to teach other people, I'm not necessarily doing this to Paschal Shilas. I'm doing this as a devotion to God. I'm doing this because this is what, as a Jew, I'm required to do. It's the bar to bum. You have to talk about it. You have to v'shinan to muvenecha. Shinanta means just you repeat it, you say it over. That this is the way we use our mouths and our eyes and you know our hands to turn pages or even to to uh, scroll on our phones to learn Torah. And I'll be honest with you. I enjoy that we are learning these, this together, the Gorarian, but I don't really care about how clear it is, the teaching, although I try to teach it clearly. This is a devotion that I'm doing, and if it benefits other people, we can learn together, and maybe someone else hears what I'm saying and sees that I'm wrong and can correct me and rebuke me. I, I welcome it. If I, I'm saying, if I'm not getting shot, I just, I, I, and in this way, I also want to make a kesher to my ancestor. It's uh, to venerate such a holy ancestor as the Maral Me Prague, someone who we cannot understand. What a tremendous tzaddik and gadol he was. You know, it's, it's important that we understand the gadolim of our own times on whatever level we can, because then we recognize that someone like Reb Chaim Kanievsky, and I never really had any special kesher to him, but now, you know, it's an amazing thing that Tanya says, all this for him say, it's already in the Zohar Kodesh, that when a tzaddik leaves this world, right, his presence is much greater than when he was in the world. And 
I always knew who Rebchaim Kanievsky was. I never felt a catcher to him like I do now in this week of Shiva that we're, we're mourning his loss. It's, I'm really experiencing that which the Tanya says, and I think we're all experiencing it. That we feel a connection to Reb Chaim. Certainly the people who had a connection to him probably also feel a much stronger connection. But someone like me, I didn't really have any connection to him. You know, I, I saw him once. I didn't go make an effort to go see him. I happened to be, I was, I was at the Koisel, at Chatoin in Mazgar Ayoyim. And, and I saw him there. And I was happy that I saw him. I know what Rabbi Nachman says, that you, your eyes should look at the Tzadikim. And I still see it. I can still see that vision of seeing Rav Chaim Kanievsky by the place. You know, and it's an amazing thing because my local Rav, it's all goes inside, Rabbi Fishbane, he saw Rebbe Chonim. So when I look at his eyes, I'm looking at the eyes that looked at Rebbe Chonim. And he told me, he said he was maybe six years old, seven, eight years old, something like that, when Rebbe Chonim came to his home. And he said, I can still see Rebbe Chonin in front of my eyes. And he said, the, the Rayats came to his home. He said, he could still see the Rayats, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Ashrei, how fortunate, how happy, how, how blessed are the eyes that seen the Tzadikim. And then there were Tzadikim that I had a special connection to, like Rav Daniel Frisch, Zuchosia Galenu, other Tzadikim, and, and, and Heintek and Tzadikim. Still, or, or, I remember Sklana Rebbe, he used to go a lot to Sklana Rebbe. Not that much, but I went quite often, and I would go out of my way and miss the Sklana Rebbe so much. And I haven't been to his children. I've only been to his caver, I think, twice since the Snifter. But uh, I remember Rav Kaduri, Zuchosi Adelaide, with Sadiqim. And the thing is, so when we when we see people we remember, like Rav Victor Miller and Sklater Eva and Rav Kaduri, and then we realize what they are compared to the previous generation, to Rav Aaron Kudler, to the Ben Ishchai, to Samarov, who I didn't see. It was before my time. All of them, obviously. But my, you know, my Rav, Rabbi Fishman, he saw, he, was, he had a Kesher with Samarov. He had a Kesher with Rav Aaron. He had a Kesher with, uh, you know, all different tzaddikim with Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky and, and with Rav Palm and with Rav Gifter and, and with uh, uh, Rav Gustman with the Baba Varov and I can't imagine who these people were I could have seen the Baba Varov but it's one of my I really regret that I didn't see Rav Palm and I didn't see Baba Varov people I love very much anyway rambling on for 14 minutes already but there's something very special with these devotions and the reason I'm saying this is like, so to go back further in time to try to imagine who was who was Sadzarov, who was the, the Rishoner, who was the Tzemach Tzedek, who was the Kafachayim, can't imagine. And then you go further back, you know, who was the Vilner Gon, who was, who was the Levietzik Redichever, who was the, the Rebbe Melech, 
go back further, it was the Baal Shem Tev Kaddish, it was the Rechaim Kaddish. And then, so to go back, so that I have a Kesher, that I'm an Enikul of, of the Chavos Yoyer, which I'm sure many other people listening also Enikul of the Chavos Yoyer. It's just that I have, I have more Hashem, even though I don't understand all of his farim. But I feel a very special Kesher to the Chavos Yor. I feel very strong connection to him by learning his Svarim. And then his Zeta, but the thing is, can't imagine who he was. Can't imagine who he was. And it's what a Chochem he was, what a Tzadik he was. And then to go back further to the Maharal Prague, who was the great-grandfather of the Chavos Yoyer, and I'm trying to make a Kesher with the Maharal Miprag. I'm trying so hard to make a Kesher with the Maharal Miprag. And I was there by the Maharal Miprag. I didn't know at the time it was an of the Maharal Miprag, but I, I had a feeling... You know, I remember I, I was there at Nicholsburger Rebbe for months. He was there, and he kept saying the Zayn of the Morale. And I, I'm, there's something in me one time also the Anikul for the Morale, but I didn't know. You know, I didn't have now. And then later I learned that I, that the Anikul for the Morale. And I, I I taught in the yeshiva that was named uh, or Chodesh, Prague, Prague yeshiva. And the Zayid in Monroe was the Prager Rov. And it's a very similar name, Rabbi Joseph Schwartz, because even though my English name is Joseph, my Hebrew name is Yitzchak. But my, uh, my mother's maiden name is Schwartz, Schwartz. I don't know if we're related more than the Maral. But I told Och, I've been Och and Enikl from Maral. We found Maral had a Gehata Sach Enikluch. But uh, I, uh, I'm trying. By when we learn this together, that's what I'm trying to do. To be honest, and if we learn it together, Gavaldik, you know, I would learn a lot more together with the Oilam, like this. Uh, just I, uh, you know, I'm I'm trying, you know. So anyway, let's 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 learn, let's learn. Maybe or I'm going to stop this video and make it a separate video because it's uh, we should really learn. We should start the video with with the with the limud. But I'm saying that's my kavana. Why am I learning this? Is because I want to make a kesher to my Zayda Marama Prague, my holy ancestor, but. First and foremost, before all of that has to come with, there's a devotion to God. And this type of devotional learning uh, and habitual learning is a very precious thing. We should not poo-poo it. We should not say that it's, it's, it's meaningless. No, it's, it's very meaningful. Even if we don't get pshat, but we put in our hashtadlis, even if we don't understand what we're saying, but we put in the effort... God will reward us for this learning that we do together, as long as we mean it l'shem shemayim, and we, and we, um, and, and we stay the way we're supposed to in the world, and not sully our Torah learning with you know, said he can say that we could we could do a lot of damage in the world. So let's do tshuva for all the bad things we've done. It's Erev Shabbos, you know, by the river Melech, it was like Erev Yom Kippur was there for Erev Shabbos. Even the, even the girls who worked in the kitchen felt that, you know, even if they fought all week, but Erev Shabbos came and they all forgave each other. And we need to make Shalom in the world. <coughs> we need to make Shalom. And my Rebbe, Kalver Rebbe Shlita, said, when we have to do Shalom, we should eat if there's peace among the Jews, there'll be peace in the world. He said, you know, 
he had the, he said he heard, you know, from between what the Gera Rebbe had to say about it and his own Rebbe, Rebbe Arla Belzer, had to say about it. The Rebbe Arla Belzer said, we have to pray for peace in the world. But the way we can get to peace in the world is if we have peace among our people. And among our people, and specifically, most importantly, first and foremost, among the religious Jews. We have to, we can agree to disagree. We can disagree on very important issues. We have to love each other and we have to have peace. And I, I'm feeling so guilty about you know, all kinds of machlekes. And I really want to do tshuva. And it's so difficult to go and apologize to people and to humble yourself. And also how to do it, because it's not just me who's involved, there's other people involved. It's not my comment, it's not my thing. So it's 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 very difficult to all these things. So I don't know if I'm gonna upload this or not, I probably will because I just upload everything, but, but let's uh, let's get to learning. I'm gonna stop this video and make another video where we're gonna learn with Hashem. I hope so, please God, help us to learn. Sargalain was her secha. You see, this is why I never could hold on to Chavrusa in Yeshiva. Because I love to schmooze. I love to dash in Zech. And, it, and it's Bittel Torah. Let's learn Torah. Let's learn Torah. Remember, Reb Chaim said that Bittel Torah is worse than any virus. Let's talk and learn. All right, so let's turn this off and then we'll, we'll start over. God bless. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. It was Divrei Musser. It wasn't, wasn't pointless. But. All right, love you. Take care.